In this video, we will go through one of the coolest features we have on neural frames, and that is modulations. Modulations is extremely powerful, and if you're a musician or have worked with digital audio workstations before, this feature will be very familiar to you. If you're not a musician, let me introduce you to it. It seems more complicated than it is, really, and it's very powerful and a lot of fun, actually. So. In the previous video, we have spoken about the, the first row on the timeline, which is the prompt input row, uh, where we have all these parameters that kind of determine uh, what kind of imagery will be generated. Underneath this, we have another row, and that is the modulation timeline. And here we can double click, and you will see that, that you will get these very strange waveforms here. And yeah, this is what we call modulations. Now, first of all, you can choose between oscillator and audio. At the moment, I don't have an audio uploaded. We will come to this later. And so this is set to oscillator. Then we can sync this oscillator to, B to BPM mode. Let's speak about this in a second. But first of all, we can pick a shape of the oscillator, sine wave. And we can increase the amplitude here, then it becomes clearer. This is a sine wave. This is a square wave. This is pulses or a sawtooth. Well, I was a physicist in my previous life, and so these waveforms uh, come from, from deep, deep from my heart. <laughs> so let's say we have a sine wave. Now, we have a, a wave has a certain frequency and a certain amplitude. Frequency is the speed at which it vibrates, and amplitude is the height of, of it, okay? And so the frequency we could put, let's say, one per second, or let's say 0 0.6 per second or something like that. And then it has a modulation target, and here you will notice that all of these targets are these parameters here. So what we can do with the targets of this modulation box to modulate these parameters. For instance, we could say that we want to rotate clockwise, counterclockwise with this amplitude here. We actually show in this, in this purple hover state the value with which this parameter will oscillate. If we change the amplitude, let's say to 10, let's go radical, so radical that, that the box doesn't even show this curve anymore, you will see it will go much higher, right? On the other side, if we, if we adjust the rotation in the box itself, you will find that these values are now changed. So here it will reach 13, and here it will reach minus 7, okay? Because it's biased towards one direction, because it's, the box is already rotating. So let's not rotate and let's just rotate clockwise and counterclockwise, maybe amplitude 7. I think it's a lot, but let's just render this. The, the modulations are applied in the render itself, and so you always need to re-render sections if, if you want to apply modulation. Okay, while this renders, we can play it back. So first of all, we have the video without any modulation here. We are zooming in slightly. And then we start rotating and it really it, it oscillates forth and back, okay? What other people do is you can pick the plus here and actually add modulation tracks one after the other if you wanted to. I've seen projects with really infinite amount of modulations underneath each other. They can balance each other out, but they can also be completely independent. And they just add, add up, okay? So we could say one is, one is rotating clockwise, counterclockwise, one is zooming in and out or something, going crazy. And uh, this could also be a different type of uh, waveform, maybe a sawtooth. Let's just add this from here on for fun. Okay, and let's play this back. Again, at the beginning we have nothing, just a slight zoom in. Then we start rotating left and right. Nice. And then we start zooming in on top of this and out. <laughs> it gets a bit weird. Okay, the, I, I hope that's clear. We can do something else also. Let's remove these. And for that I want to introduce this other mode, which is the BPM sync. This is just, if you have, if you have set the BPM up here, for the song, let's say you have a song with 85 BPM, then this can be set to a frequency of the song, okay? So for instance, one bar, or two bars, or half a bar. If you are, this is again, if you're familiar with digital audio workstations, this will be very familiar to you. If not, then this is just the frequency in, 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 in units of this BPM. It's just optional, you don't need to use this, right? But, but you can. 
Now let's say we want the sine wave and now we want to modulate strength. Remember strength is a parameter for how much new stuff the AI will add from frame to frame. And strength usually is between zero and one, right? So as this is in the units of strength, we can put this to, let's say one. If we put it to three, it doesn't really change anything. It will go basically only between, between one and then 0 0.05, which is the minimum. Right, so let's put it to zero and one and, and this to, I don't know why this shows like this, one bar and then let's create. Let's play it back. First slide zoom in and then we start now with the modulation and you see a lot of change, very little change. A lot of change, very little change. Right, this makes sense. And this is basically now a strength modulation. We can apply all of these uh, to any value we want. And now let's let's take this up a notch by uploading a song. Now we have a song here. Ignore the render for now. This is unrelated. It's basically still our old render. What you can see is that Neural Frames uploads um, the audio components of the song. For instance, we can play the kick. Oh, there's no kick drum. <laughs> For instance, here's the bass. And now what's really fancy is we can go to audio mode here and use these stems to modulate certain parameters. And for me, this is just the coolest feature we have. I, I have to be honest. So you, you can see the signal of whatever stem you have selected here. For instance, the kick drum. And then we could modulate, we could zoom in on the kick drum or something like that. One cool effect is always, let's pick the snare maybe. And on the snare, we modulate the strength. Now we can pick a rather high amplitude. The, this amplitude is multiplied to this uh, waveform, which itself is normalized. So only when this waveform reaches its very highest points, will the strength be effectively one here. Then we have maybe some other stems as well, which, which we can check out, for instance, other. Maybe we can zoom in a little bit on other. And then we can render this. Cool. You can see a slight zoom in on, this, on, the, on the keys. It's very gentle. And now the strength comes in. See, on the snare, we have these strength bumps. In this case, it's very gentle. Here's another project which has a bit um, more of an upbeat vibe. And again, we have the kick to the strength and then the snare negative to edge echo, which I also like to do. The edge echo keeps things stable. And then if you put a negative amplitude to the edge echo, every now and then the edge echo goes away. And this is a way to kind of change scenes a little bit if the edge echo is too strong. You can see on the kick drum that there's always changes. And then the prompt changes and camera movement here. All right, we have tons of tutorials on our YouTube channel where you can see me create projects uh, on the fly and go through some of the details of the settings also and give some tips. But I think these are the fundamentals to, to create sick vid music videos in, in frame by frame mode. Thank you very much and uh, happy rendering.